Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Christ Lutheran Church in Roanoke, Virginia. It's wonderful that you could be here with us, whether you are here uh, at, at Christ Lutheran or whether you are worshiping with us online. We're grateful to be together on this second Sunday in Lent. You may notice the music sounds a little bit different. We've got an actual piano playing for us uh, this morning, so it may sound a little different, especially to those of you who are watching online. Lots of announcements, lots of things going on. Uh, today, right after the service, 10 o'clock, I invite you to stay or come on and join us. Uh, we're going to gather here for uh, our Together at 10. Everybody, all ages together, we're going to eat. I know there's some good food coming. We're going to play some games and laugh and eat and do some, um, some artwork uh, all together, all ages. So please come and join us for that. On Monday at 10.30 a.m., we continue our adult Bible study, also here in the Fellowship Hall. If you are interested in joining but you can't come in person and you'd like to join in online, just let me know and I will send you a Zoom link for that. It is the season of Lent, and so we are gathering on Wednesdays for Holden Evening Prayer at 7 o'clock. Before that, right again in this room, we're having a soup and bread suppers. Our Women's Bible Study is hosting that this coming week. Lots of good soups and good fellowship uh, contributions during the dinner are supporting the Habitat Apostles Building Fund. And then we move on to evening prayer in the sanctuary. Also, throughout the season of Lent, uh, many of us are on a 40-day journey with Martin Luther with uh, readings for every day. We're also having some conversation on Facebook, are posting a question every day and inviting you to answer it and to share your thoughts with one another. You can do that on Facebook as well as at faithatchrist.com. Uh, look forward to hearing from you this week. Also, our Jerry Hickenbottom Memorial Scholarship for uh, high school, uh, those who have graduated high school and are continuing uh, full-time school, that application for that scholarship is March 15th, so that's coming right up, and that is $1,000. So um, if you are a member of Christ Open Church and would like to apply for that, please do as soon as possible. A couple of volunteer opportunities that we are needing to fill um, very quickly. We need uh, someone to serve in our nursery. Uh, we do have a paid position if you're interested in being there uh, or you know someone who may be interested in being there every Sunday from 1045 to 1215, but we're also going to need uh, some volunteers to help. So please um, let me know if you are able to, to serve in any way in our child care. Also, we have uh, at least one of our members needing a ride to and from the 11 o'clock service. Uh, so if you are able to help out with that, please let uh, Pastor Dave or Fiona or me uh, know about that when you can. We continue now to prepare our hearts for worship with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Here are the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the power of the Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, our leader and guide, in the waters of baptism, you bring us to new birth to live as your children. Strengthen our faith in your promises that by your spirit we may lift up your life to all the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading, Genesis 12, verses 1 through 4. The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, so that ye will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, kids, come on up. If you're, if you're over 10 and you'd like to come and see the pictures in my book, you're welcome to do that. Come on up, ladies. Come on up. You've got a maraca. Mm -hmm. Come here. Come here. Chicken, chicken, chicken. There it is. <laughs> All right. At the, at the end of our confession this morning, we heard a part of a Bible verse that went like this. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that everyone who believes in him may never die but have eternal life. And I'm going to read those words again as part of our gospel reading in just a minute, but it's just such a wonderful thing that we are remember all the time for sure, but especially during the season of Lent, that God loves. God loves the whole world. Who does that include? You think it includes me? Yeah? Do you think it includes you? Yeah? Do you think it includes any of those people out there? Even the grumpy ones? Yeah? No, not the grumpy ones? <laughs> All right, cheer up, everybody. All right. Yeah, everybody, how about uh, the rivers and the lakes and the streams and the dogs and the cats and the deer and the bugs, right? The whole world. Well, I brought a book that reminds me, Always, by Emma Dodd. Good reading. Yeah, did you write this? Yeah. Oh no, that's not your last name. So think about God reading these words to you. That's right, say it again. Sometimes you're happy. Sometimes you're sad. Oh, sometimes you're sad. Sometimes you're good. Sometimes you're good. Is that true? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes you're... Oh, uh oh. Do you ever cause trouble? Yeah. Yeah, so do some of those grumpy people out there. Sometimes you're scared. Sometimes you're brave. Sometimes you misbehave. Oh my goodness. I don't believe that any of you guys do that. Oh, sometimes you're dirty. Oh, yes. Yes. Then you take a shower. Then you take a shower, exactly. And then sometimes you're clean, sometimes you're kind, and sometimes you're, mm, no, sometimes we are, aren't we? Even if we don't mean to be. But no matter what you say or do, I always love you. That's what God says to us. You do, you can take it back and read it in your pussy, okay? Okay. So, what a wonderful thing, though, to remember that God loves us all the time, no matter what. And that is good news. And it is good news that I want you to share with others, okay? All right. Thank you guys for coming up. Here you go, you can read it. 
Just give it back to me so I can read it to somebody else another time, okay? Yep. No. <laughs> I'll tell your mom where you can get a copy. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. So try to get a picture of this scene. It's nighttime, it's dark, it's quiet. Nicodemus and Jesus, Nicodemus is a Pharisee, and these two are together. They are conversing, discussing, theologizing. Like so many others, Nicodemus had seen the signs that Jesus had been doing, and out of curiosity, fear, maybe faith, he just to meet him, to talk to him, one-on-one. Of course, Nicodemus came to the conversation with knowledge of his own, right? He was a Pharisee. He was trained in religious law, well-practiced in the ways of ritual holiness, and he came with knowledge, the knowledge that comes with life experience, right? Jesus must have been a teacher sent by God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Nicodemus knew that Jesus was special, but he couldn't quite grasp the fullness of Jesus' identity and power, at least, at least not yet. He couldn't, he couldn't grasp Jesus' abstract language here either, right? It's a little bit strange. Very truly I tell you, says Jesus, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Um, You can just see Nicodemus saying, um, (laughs) excuse me, how can anyone be born again after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? What Jesus is saying is completely and understandably out of line with Nicodemus' experience and understanding of God. Very truly I tell you, Jesus says again, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. How can these things be? I've heard Nicodemus' response described as incredulous outbursts of disbelief and astonishment. That sounds about right, doesn't it? What Jesus is talking about here doesn't make sense. 
offering sacrifices to God, as their ancestors had been doing for generations and generations, that made sense to Nicodemus. But being born from above, born again of water and spirit, God's promise of eternal life being given simply through the love of God? The love of God for the whole world? The love of God for the whole world? world, which includes all manner of Gentiles and sinners and grumpy people, <laughs> how can this be? Now, of course, Nicodemus is not alone among our biblical ancestors as one prone to incredulous outbursts of disbelief and astonishment. You may recall one who even laughed when she heard the way that God planned to bring about a promise, Sarah, the wife of Abraham. Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have a child? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I'm old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Well, obviously not. Sarah did bear a son when, according to Genesis, she was in her 90s and Abraham was 100 years old. That's a little scary, right? They named him Isaac which means laughter. This whole story of Sarah and Abraham's relationship with God is one that goes back and forth between faith and disbelief. In our first reading today, we see God call the couple to go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And they went, just like that. They took all their possessions and servants and they went to a new life in a new land. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like deep faith to me. God made promises. I will bless, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless the one who blesses you, and I will curse the one who curses you, and in you all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. Abraham and Sarah believed and lived out their faith in obedience. But not always. <laughs> like all relationships, Abraham and Sarah's relationship with the Lord knew its share of doubt and distrust as well. There was Abraham's first attempt at having a son through Sarah's servant Hagar, the two times that Abraham passed his wife off as his sister, all kinds of other instances, if you go back and read in Genesis, of their unbelief as well as their great faith. Suffice it to say, their relationship with God was complicated. Their life of faith was marked by highs and lows, belief and distrust. And that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Nicodemus' story includes those same elements. We see him in our reading today as one who could see Jesus only as a great teacher, but over time... It seems the curiosity that led him to Jesus that night was turning into a living faith in Jesus as Son of God. We meet Nicodemus two more times in John's Gospel. In chapter 7, we see him offer something of a defense of Jesus with some of his peers. And then later, in chapter 19, after Jesus' lifeless body is taken down from the cross, Nicodemus joined Joseph of Arimathea in burying him, providing spices, wrapping it according to the custom. Somewhere along the way, his relationship with Jesus deepened, his faith was strengthened. Believing for Nicodemus seems to be a process, a journey. Ups and downs, ins and outs, trust and despair, belief and doubt, the life of faith for our biblical ancestors, as well as for any of us, is really simple. Not a once and done event. Luther Seminary professor Caroline Lewis wrote years ago that Nicodemus encounters with Jesus suggests that believing in Jesus is an ambiguous effort. We tend to talk about our faith, or having faith, assuming that it is a done deal. That believing is as simple as acquiring faith. But the Gospel of John never refers to faith as a noun. Faith is not a possession, not something that one gets. 
Not something that one has, it is something that one does. Believing is a verb. And as a verb, believing is subject to all of the ambiguity, the uncertainty, and the indecisiveness of being human. We need to take seriously, writes Lewis, what faith looks like when it is active, living, permeable, and dynamic. We need to consider earnestly that having an incarnated God may require an incarnational faith. That believing is just as complicated as it is to be human. Of course, it's complicated. It's impossible. It's impossible. Making a great nation, blessing the whole world through a childless couple long past retirement age. The creator of all that is wanting, willing to do anything to be in relationship with all of humanity and each person in particular. God the Father willing to give a son to live and suffer and die for God so loved the world. The crucified Christ being raised from the dead that we too may have abundant, eternal life with him. It's impossible. It's impossible to believe and yet this is our God. This is our faith. It's impossible and complicated and difficult because, and here's the really hard part, it's completely out of our control. God loved the world. God loves the world, including each and every one of us, including all those we love and all those we don't love, individuals and groups, and nations, God loves the world without qualification, without fail, without even checking to see if we want to be loved. God just does it. Sends a son to live and die and be raised again for us. And I don't know about you, but as wonderful as that sounds, it's also tough for me. It sounds kind of counter counterintuitive, but but I prefer to be in control of my life and to at least feel like I have some control of the world around me. And then in comes Jesus talking about love, unconditional love. Love that inspires but does not coerce. <coughs> love that empowers without threat. Love that is good news not only because we are children who need to be loved, but because we are God's people who need to love to grow in love for God and the whole world. Each week, we come to worship. We experience the presence of God in word and sacrament and song and prayer and fellowship, and then we go out. We go out to our community, to our homes and jobs and schools where we are called to be witnesses to the grace of God to share the blessings of God, to love with the unconditional love of God. We honor this God who so loved the world. As we love and support and respect our families, our spouses and children, parents and siblings, all those closest to us, we honor the God who so loved the world as we reach out to our colleagues, as we treat our classmates with dignity and compassion. We honor the God who so loved the world as we provide for those in need in our community and around the world. As we speak out on behalf of the most vulnerable, as we seek justice for those our culture does not value, as we work to protect the earth and its resources, as we live God's unconditional, unending love. So I want you to think for a minute. Who do you know? Who do you know? A family member, a friend, a colleague, a classmate, an acquaintance who needs to be reminded, or maybe told for the first time, that they are loved, accepted, and called into relationship with the God of all. Who do you know? Who needs to hear that God loves them whatever their doubt? With whom might you share the ways that Christ has touched your life? 
Who could you invite here to church to worship or Bible study or soup supper? I challenge you and challenge you to reach out to that person sometime during this Lenten season. And as you do, know that I'm praying for you and that I'm praying that you too experience anew this good news. For God so loved the world. He gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Amen. By God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Oh God, you so love your church. Raise up leaders who care for your people. Bless lay theologians, seminary and college professors, and all who are called to the ministry of teaching, that they form and, and inspire us for the work of the gospel. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. O oh God, you so love your creation. Breathe new life into our planetary home. Guide the work of researchers, scientists, and activists who love your earth and who inspire us to care for the natural world. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. O oh God, you so love the world. Uphold leaders who resist tyranny and oppression. Strengthen organizations that promote peace and harmony. Direct their work to alleviate human suffering and to address its root causes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Oh God, you so love your people. Draw near to all who live with mental illness, depression, or addiction, and accompany them in healing and recovery. Hear the cries of all who look to you and their distress. 
We pray today especially for Mary Catherine and Ronan and their family, for Carrie and Bob, for Tom, for Thatcher, for Evren, and for John and Pete and David, for all those that we name before you in our hearts and all those we lift up before you on our prayer list. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Oh God, you so love your children. Bless the young in our midst and delight us with their joy, wonder, and curiosity. Revive our ministries with children and youth and equip us all for faithful discipleship. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Oh God, you so love your saints. As our ancestors in the faith have been a blessing to us, so inspire us by their example of holy living to be a blessing to those who come after us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with those around you. Peace. Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take a meat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As you come up this morning, I'll invite um, people on my right, so your left, um, to come down the side aisle and across, and then people on the other side can come down the center aisle and across.
body of Christ given for you. 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 The 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 body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch your world with your love. Amen. Now, God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection, and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. <laughs>